This morning, I just want to take a few minutes of your time of just to speak briefly on this subject called the battlefield of the mind. Somebody say the battlefield of the mind. And our proof text, uh, proof text will be Proverbs 20, 23, verse 7. If you don't have your Bible, uh, it's going to be on the screen. And it says this, whatever man thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever the man thinks in his heart, so is he. I just want to do, um, just to exercise your thinking process this morning. If you have your phone or something that you're going to be taking notes with, I want you to, to do this with me. I want you to write down a number between 1 and 10. Write down a number, uh, everybody please. Write down a number between 1 and 10. All right. I want you to double it. And now I want you to add 6 to that number. And then divide it by half. Then subtract the number you originally started with. You guys ready for this one? All right. Your number is three. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that works. But anyways, <laughs> it's weird. I tried every number and it all comes out to three. Ah, uh, this is good. So I just want to make sure that you guys are all here. Um, you know, I used to wonder, I used to wonder before what other people are thinking about? Have you, anybody wondered about that? What is that person sitting across me? Is it what's happening through your, what's happening through their mind? And you know, and I got Facebook and now I, I don't really want to know what other people think about it because whatever they think they usually put up on Facebook. Experts estimate that there's an uh, expert estimate about 50,000 thoughts per day, which means about 2,100 thoughts that you and I think per hour. 2,100 thoughts that we think per hour. Um, and there was another uh, estimate uh, is that in 2009, study shows the journalists of circulation looked at a data from nearly 100,000 women and found that the most cynical uh, participants were more likely to have a heart disease than the least cynical folks. The more pessimistic women also had a higher chance of dying over a study of period versus those who were more optimistic about humanity. This, this morning, I just want to talk to you about our mindset. Our mindset. What do we think about all day long? What is those thoughts that are beginning to dominate your mind? Whatever dominates your mind will dominate your life. Whatever begins to dominate your mind on your daily, whatever the, the majority of your thoughts are, that is the same thing that's going to dominate your life. We have to understand that the Bible really talks about the heart. It talks about our mind. And it says that, you know, you know the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees begin to tackle the issue of actions. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, if you do this, you'll be punished. But Jesus comes on the scene and begins to challenge everybody. And he says, no, don't concentrate on the actions. Begin to concentrate on the heart. Begin to concentrate on your mind. Because out of the heart begins to spring forth, you know, the, the fear, the jealousy, the hate, the, the every single thing. It just begins to say, you know, you say that if you kill your brother or whatever, I say if you hate your brother, it's as if you commit murder. You begin to talk about, you know, if you uh, commit adultery, but I come to you say that if you look at a woman lustfully, it's, it's the same thing as you've already done it. Jesus begins to tackle the issue of the heart, of the mind, and he begins to say that, no, don't begin to try to solve, you know, your actions. Begin to look at the heart. Begin to look at your mind. What is dominating your mind? What, is, what are you filling your mind with? Because what you dominate your mind will begin to dominate your life. Tell your neighbor, what begins to dominate your mind will dominate your life. And the first point I want you to write down is this, that mind management is the first priority of an overcomer. Mind management is the first priority of an overcomer. If you want to live a victorious life, you need to learn how to manage your mind. 
If you want to live a life of victory, of health, of blessing, if you want to live a life where you succeed, wherever that you go, favor begins to follow you. You have to learn one thing, to manage your mind. What begins to overtake your mind? We are the products of our thoughts. Whatever our thoughts are being filled with, that is what you are a product of. You are today because of your thoughts yesterday. And tomorrow you'll be of what your thoughts are today. You are today of your thoughts of yesterday. And tomorrow you'll be because of the result of the thoughts that you have today. What begins to fill your mind? Is it negative news? Is it that you begin to see, oh, the world is coming to an end. Things are going down. You know, the government's corrupt. Oh, this, uh, you know, my kids are not doing well. Oh, doctor, I have this sickness. It might be cancer. Oh, everybody's being laid off of my job. I'll probably be next. What is dominating my, is it positive things or is it the fear that is around you? You don't need to go too far to be able to see negative things. Just turn on CNN. You always begin to see either shootings there, killings there, things like that. And some people are like, oh, you, you can't be taking the planes. Oh, you don't do, don't join the protest. There could be bombs. Oh, don't, don't do this or do that. They were so scared by their mind. And their mind begins to be filled by fear. And sooner or later, like, oh, you know, I knew this was going to happen. No, you gave your thoughts the power for it to come to place. You know, as we read in the scripture in Proverbs, it says, whatever the, whatever the man thinks, so is he. Whatever you give your mind to, that's what's going to take place. I know many people, they're like, oh, you know, I'm always sick. Oh, I'm always this. You know, I'm always, you know, having this pain. It might be cancer. And sooner or later, that thing begins to turn into the sickness. And as, as we read, even, even the unsecular studies begin to show that the people who are more worried, who are more stressed, who have their mind filled with negativity are more likely to have a sickness. That's not, I'm, I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the, even the, the scientists and the doctors begin to say, if your mind is begin to be filled with negative things, you are more likely to be sick. You are more likely to be sick. Whatever begins to dominate your mind will dominate your life. What fills your mind this morning? Are you standing upon the word of God and the promises that God has given you? Or you begin to be filled by what's around you, the circumstances that you have in your life? Are you beginning to be filled by the feelings and the rage that go, happens inside of you? Or the thoughts that God that says that I will not be overcome. I'm a chosen generation. Defeating and failures are things of the past. God has given me not a spirit of fear but a power of sound mind. What fills your mind? We complain, oh my life is like this. You have the power to change your life. Because you are today of the results that you had yesterday. So if you want a better tomorrow, start thinking different. If you want a greater future, if you want your kids to, to be changed, don't speak negativity in your life. Don't begin to think, oh, my son is there. Oh, he, he most likely is doing drugs. Oh, my, oh, my daughter is this. Oh, most likely she's talking to her at a party or this like that. No, you need to fill your mind with the word of God. Whatever begins to fill your mind will sooner or later become your words. Words and thoughts, they, they, they are, you cannot separate the two. If, if you are saying something, sooner or later you will think it. If you are thinking something, sooner or later you will say it. What are you saying? What are you thinking in your mind? What begins to dominate your mind? Uh, one thing, uh, I think somebody said that um, 70 to 80% of your thoughts are repetitive. They, so the more you begin to think certain things, the more they begin to repeat in your life and the more be, they begin to dominate your life. Are you living a life in your mind of a victorious life or a defeated life? In your mind, are you a victor or are you a victim? In your mind, do you begin to understand that the word of God is on my side, that the word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, that every decision that I make, God is by my side and I will not be defeated. Or are you living, oh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody. You know, mistakes are going to come place. And you begin to feed in your mind. But I believe as a church, we are grown up in a generation where we'll be standing on the promises and the word of God. Amen, church? I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm not a victim. Say it louder. I'm not a victim. I am a victor. I am who God says I am. Say it louder. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. 
and I have what God says I have. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. If you lose a battle in your mind, you will lose that battle in your life. Don't expect a better life when you are defeated in your mind. Don't expect positive results when in your mind you do not want to take your mind under control, under management and begin to dominate. What do you say about your finances? What do you begin to say when you when your work and things are not to begin to be going good and in your mind like, oh, you know, I, I just don't have enough. I don't have enough to pay my bills. Oh, uh, we're probably going to be short this month. Oh, uh, everything, the next business that we're going to do, all this business, I begin to fail. I'm, most likely, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bankrupt and all these things. Did you know that an average millionaire goes through bankruptcy three to four times? What makes them separate from the other people? is they have mind management. They know one thing that, you know what? I go through this, but inside I have more than enough. Inside, God has given me not a spirit of fear, but of strength, of power, of love, and a sound mind. Everything my hand touches will be blessed. Everywhere my foot steps will be blessed. I shall be blessed as I come in. I shall be blessed as I come out. That is their mindset. The rest of the people, when they see a certain opportunity, they're like, well, you know, if, if it didn't work out, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not God's will for me. If it's, you know, if it doesn't go right, if things begin to go against me, you know, then it, it probably God doesn't want me to do. I'll just, I'll just settle, I'll just relax. And they live a lifestyle and a mindset of defeat. Many, many people that, that begin to come to church and they, they come out of a life that has been dominated and been broken by sin, by, by Satan. They begin to be crippled and when they see the promises of God, it's no, that's too good to be true. I know many guys who, who come out, uh, you know, of a lifestyle of partying, of drinking and God wants to bless them with a good marriage. God wants to bless them with a good relationship but in their mind they're so broken that they're like, God, you know, I don't, I don't deserve a good relationship because look at what I've done. And the relationship begins to break, begins to break, and then begins to break. And they see why is these things happening, God? If you have a good life, well, because in your mind you are defeated. In your mind you are broken. You think that you deserve this because of what you've done. And that is exactly what the Bible says that you will have. You know, some people come out of a lifestyle where they begin to steal, and they begin to rob, they begin to cheat people. And they come and they give their life to Jesus. And they, they feel like God will not bless you in finances because of what I've done in the past. And to live a lifestyle of God, I just want a paycheck just to pay my bills and that is enough. Where God says that gold and silver is mine and you're my child. And you're just, ba you're just, you're just asking just for enough to pay your bills. What, what mindset do you have? If we were to reflect the nature and the character of our Heavenly Father, then our Heavenly Father's nature is gold and silver is mine. And it just kind of doesn't line up. How are you managing your thoughts? What is running through your mind? I had to, I remember there was several times in my, in my life where, um, you know, I, I, I begin to think of myself, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't deserve, uh, I don't, I don't deserve a good life that God has for me because, you know, some things that I've done and I'm just looking at my life, I'm like, well, God, just give me enough not to, not for it to be bad and that I'm happy with it. And as I begin to read the scripture and I begin to, the word of God begin to enlighten my mind that no, you just don't need to settle for normal. You need to settle for the best because God has given his best on the cross for you. So if you're just setting for a miracle, it does not make sense. If God would just give just the normal of the heavens for you, then you can settle for normal. But God has given the best from heaven so you can have, live a life that is the best. We will not be in the bottom, we'll be in the top. We will not be the tail, we'll be the head and that is the promises of God. What is dominating your mind this morning church? Is it whore? Is it lust? Is it envy? Is it thing? What it begins to, you have the power to control it. You have the power to change it that tomorrow will be a better future. Amen church? I want, to, I want you to write number two. A man's life is what he thinks about all day long. A man's life is what he thinks about all day long. I know many, many people that you begin to, the, there's a scripture that, that talks about in Romans 12 verse 22. I just want to read it for you. And it says this.
and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can change your mind by transforming it through the word of God. You can take your mind, what it, you feel like your mind is dominated by, by lust, by envy, by anger, by depression, by fear, all these things. You can renew it by the, taking God's word, making it part of you, and by its very nature, the word of God will begin to change your life, your behavior, and everything that has to do with you. Amen, church? I want you to write down a few quick steps of how to win the battle in your mind. How to win the battle in your mind. Number one. Fill yourself with positive information. Just like we read right now in the scripture that begin to renew your mind by the word of God. Fill yourself with positive information. Fill yourself with the word of God. The word of God has to dominate your mind. The moment your word of God begins to dominate your mind, it will dominate your life. The word of God is only blessing. The word of God is not something that you can take and it will never benefit you. When you take the word of God and make it part of you, if it's by its very nature, will transform your life. How far is the word of God from you? You need to begin to fill your life. When you see somebody say, oh, you know, everything. I remember going to this one person's house and they always talk so bad about the government. It's like any president that comes on this thing is like they trash the government with everything that they got. It's like I, even when we lit the, the, the fire, fire, we were doing the bonfire outside. The fire didn't want to even burn because this guy was so negative. It's like chill man you know leave the government side do your thing and they're doing their best and it's like so negative like you feel like there's so much anger and and you look at their life and there's nothing that you can be proud of nothing that you can roam about nothing that you can look at and say oh I haven't made accomplishment because there's always negativity you have to fill your life with positive information whenever you see you know a cup that is half empty you tell yourself the cup is half full Whenever you see a, a you know a, a policeman pulls you over and gives you two hundred dollar ticket, that is a two hundred dollar lesson that you'll never repeat again. You have to always see the best out of everything. Whenever you you know you're running and uh, you you trip because you don't tie your laces, well next time you know you're not you need to tie your laces very hard or double double knot them or whatever so you don't trip again. That is a positive way to look at information. Many times people are like, you know, they, yes, life hits us all. You know, everybody that goes through it. But like Job, whenever he lost everything in his life, he still had the audacity to get on his knees and say, God, you've given and you've taken away. Blessed be your name. At least I'm still alive. God, I, I, I'll praise you when I had everything. God, I'll praise you when I don't have nothing. Because I know you give and you take away. For you, it's just a snap of a finger and everything can go back to normal. When you fill your life with positivity, you give God room to bless you. When you fill your life with God's promises, you give God the room to give you more than enough. Not just a little or enough to survive, but more than enough. Whatever your background, whatever your record may be, whatever that you went through the past, you have to put it behind you and you have to renew your mind by the word of God and what God says about you. Amen, church? Number two, reject every negative thought. Reject every, every negative thought. I want to read a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10.5. It says this. Casting down argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. You cannot control the thoughts that come in into your mind. But you control if they stay or they go. You cannot control whatever whatever thought comes. Sometimes it's just thoughts of lust, sometimes enemy, sometimes of anger, sometimes of, of temptation they come. You cannot control that, but you control if those thoughts stay or they leave. The Bible says that we need to bring every thought into the captivity of Christ because we have the power of the name Jesus Christ at our command. If any time the Satan comes to begin to tempt us, we can command Satan to go and he will flee. Jesus at all times he was tempted but he used the word of God and Satan went away from him. You too have the, the, the word of God, the name of Jesus Christ at your command and you can bring the thought 
into captivity. You don't stop a bird over flying over your head, but you can stop that bird from building a nest on top of your head. Same thing every thought, every negative thought devil sends in your life. You can stop it from dominating your mind to rule and controlling your mind and then you can live a life of victorious. Amen church? Even for me, one, one of the practices that I actually have, I, I, I even have notifications on my phone. Every two to three hours, I write certain things towards my life. For example, like I'll be the best son. I'll be the best father. I'll be the best husband. You know, I'll have more than enough. All the promises of God. God is on my side and I'll, I'll, now, and I'll not fear anything. You know, God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power, love, and sound mind. I have those notifications always popping up to me because I know one thing that if I fill my life with the word of God, I'll live a victorious life. And I'm telling you, I started doing that about a year, a year ago. And, a, and as I look back, as I look back, whatever the things that I wrote down on my phone, today they are made into reality. A year ago, remember, I was sitting there and I was, I was even showing in my home group. I was like, hey guys, you know, it would be, this would be awesome things to put up no, reminders on your phone that when they pop up, you think it's a text message. But you look at it and your mind registers, hey, I have more than enough. When you, when you look at the, uh, you look the, uh, the phone again and the reminder says, you know, I'll have the best marriage. I'll have the best relationship. Uh, register in your mind because once your mind begins to be dominated by that, that's what you will have. Today, I look at my life and I'm not surprised of the things that I have because I know that is what's dominating your mind. What is dominating your mind? Every thought that is not your own, you can bring it into subjection into Christ Jesus. You can bring that thought and you can, you can begin to reject the thought and you can take the thoughts of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The thoughts that we think, the, 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 the thoughts of God that we think, that's the, to the same extent that we think the thoughts of God, to the same extent we'll have the power of God. And the last, and the last point is this, confess God's word. Confess God's word. Joshua 1.8, it's a famous scripture that everybody knows. Uh, and it says, it says, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is according and written in it. For then you shall have, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. Confess God's word. Let the word of God begin to dominate your mind. Your mouth, if the word of God dominates your mind, sooner or later it will dominate your mouth. If the word of God dominates your mouth, sooner or later will it turn into actions. Your actions will turn into to your destiny, something that God has for your life. Amen, church? Live a victorious life. I like what Prophet T.B. Joshua always says, and he says, the extent that we think the thoughts of God is to the same extent we will have the power of God. The extent we think the thoughts of God to the same extent we'll have the power of God. This morning, my, my question to you, are you living a victorious life or are you living a vi uh, or, or victim life? Is your life being dominated by sin, by fear, by depression, or is your life dominated by the Word of God, by what God's Word says? Yeah, you may say, my circumstances, you know, they're, they're not changing. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time that you will live a victorious life. A year ago, look at, looking back now, a year ago when I started, when I started, uh, begin to say to myself every day, even though my circumstances told me otherwise, I knew one thing. Sooner or later, the word of God will begin to dominate my mind. Once it dominates my mind, it will dominate my actions and my behavior. You, you can't, you have to understand one thing. You control your mind, but your mindset controls you. You control your mind by your mindset controls you. Your mindset is, is just a house of thoughts, of many thoughts that you put together uh, over a long period of time. And as, as, you, as you begin to think certain thoughts for so many times, sooner or later it begins to spill into your mindset. And your mindset is that is who you are. If you want to change your mind, you start off changing your mind every day. But one thought at a time. One thought at a time, one thought at a time, you begin to take the thought and you begin to bring it into subjection for Christ Jesus. Amen, church? So I just want to go over those things one more time. It's number one, fill yourself with positive information. Fill yourself with positive, fill yourself with the good things. You know, if, if you have a friend that is always negative, you know, lose them. 
seriously just just get rid of them because they will bring down your life I know so many people who surround themselves with a negative crowd and they're like well why is my life so bad like that well because that's who you surround yourself with fill yourself with the positive information the things that God is doing yeah God might you know certain things might not be happening but the testimonies that we heard today is enough to show you that God is good that God is good that's why every service we show testimonies to show you the God's goodness God's mercy he did not change yesterday today and forever he is still the same fill yourself with positive information maybe even out of out of the 10 people who went to spy out Jericho and they said look we cannot take that land and the two people came and they said no God is on our side we'll do it the two people out of out of all that and, and everybody wanted to stone them but God said I'm with those two people they took a little bit of information the positive things and I'm on their side you church you with God are a majority no weapon formed against you shall prosper you will overcome everything that comes in your way because you are with God are a majority and if God is for you nothing can be against you man church that is the promise that you have to stand upon as a matter what circumstance you face this morning so it may be sickness that the doctor told you that you have so much time to live you have to understand by his stripes you are healed if it's you know money shortage that you're having you have to take the word of God and stand that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and to his glory not according to my boss but according to God's riches to God's glory if you're exper experiencing bondage in your life stand on the promises where God says whom the set sets free is free indeed he took upon this curse upon himself that we might live a life of blessing step on the word of God begin to manage your mind whatever begins to dominate your mind today begin to bring if it's not of God begin to bring those thoughts into captivity man church come on let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ